Hey everyone, welcome to another sneaker review with me. And recently, I just came back from Japan, the land of the Sakura, anime heaven, and personally, my dream vacation. And one very important thing when gallivanting and traversing such a beautiful country is, of course, a good pair of sneakers. So I decided to make this video to share with you guys what sneakers I brought to Japan. Not only because some of these sneakers are related to Japanese culture, but also because one of these sneakers I thought would be my favorite one for the trip ended up being my worst sneaker overall. So before we get started, leave a like on this video if you like this type of content. Content. That's what the like button's for and I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help a lot Please and thank you. I forgot to put my light on hold on So I wanted to make this video before I went to Japan But I'm actually happy now that I decided to do it after because I was able to test the performance really try them out I wore these sneakers walking around for a whole day at least once in the trip And I also want to share with you guys the sneakers that I was deciding between and probably the sneakers I really really wish I brought instead if you guys are curious with the thought process I have behind choosing the sneakers that I bring for my trips I do have a video on some tips and tricks tricks as a sneaker head when packing your clothes and your sneakers so definitely check that out so the first sneaker that i want to talk about was going to be my comfy boy outfit the sneaker i wore to the airport when you're going through tsa you got to take off your sneakers take put them back on again the sneaker i wore late night when going on a midnight adventure with lynette and that sneaker is the Beams Crocs collaboration. I know it's a very polar sneaker or clog, I guess you could call it. I don't know if you could really call it a sneaker, but it's a very versatile footwear, I guess you can say. Again, easy to get in and out of, super comfy. No doubt about that. Definitely one of my top comfy sneakers. I wanted to share number one. This is a size 12. I am a size 11.5, but I wear 12s because my feet are wide. This is the iconic Croc Comfort model. So you can see that it's actually sloping upward. So it's the big toe and then going downward, right? I guess it just depends on the person. My foot, the second toe, is just as big as my big toe or even maybe longer. So when I walk around a lot, the top of my toe hits this part and it kind of gets uncomfortable sometimes. Other than that, again, for quick runs to 7-Eleven, Lawson's, I'm not too conscious about how I look. I just will need it to get in and out real quick. When I was at in Universal Studios Japan, this was my school to sneaker. There was a lot of wet rides so I knew that this one would be easier to clean and easier to maintain whether or not it got wet plus again it's a Beams collaboration which is one of the biggest brands in Japan while we were driving around Tokyo we passed by the Beams building we weren't unfortunately able to go down but it was still pretty cool that finally when wearing these sneakers I did get some looks here and there people knew what this was about initially I wasn't wearing it for the aesthetic appearance or the style it was still pretty much a head turner so i did not regret bringing this at all the second sneaker that i brought which was for me purely aesthetic in the fact and i haven't reviewed it here on the channel just yet and you guys will know exactly why i brought the sneaker even though it's not the most comfortable sneaker i've talked about this silhouette but again you guys will know exactly why i brought it because it is the Nike SB Instax collaboration with the little Hachiko right there, or I call them personally the Hachikos. I want to make a review on these in the near future. You can see right there, I beat the crap out of these in Japan. I wore these, of course, to the Shibuya Crossing to take pictures at the Hachiko statue, of course. No, this is not the sneaker that I was talking about in the intro that was super uncomfortable. I was very, very surprised that this was actually more comfortable than the other sneakers because I do have a few Nike SBs in my collection and they all have the same problem with air drawers. Jordan ones, some Air Force ones. My pinky toe here on the side always hits, I think, where the stitching is right here. So it's very painful if I didn't size up. So I did size up with these. These are a size 13, which is probably why there's more wrinkling. Such a dope sneaker. I'm so happy that I brought these, especially for the pictures and the video that I got. It's kind of like hype over comfort in this matter. And I think it was pretty much worth it with this sneaker. So Instant, by the way, is another Japan brand. So you guys can tell that I have a lot of Japanese brand sneakers that I love and collect. So another testament to why Japan was my dream destination. The last sneaker finally is the sneaker that I was so surprised and so disappointed that going into this trip, I thought that this was gonna be the sneaker I wore the most. I thought it was gonna be the sneaker that I would take on long runs, going through the city, through sightseeing, through endless hours of standing on the train. Overall, I thought this was the sneaker. It's just not that guy, unfortunately. And that sneaker is the A6 Gelite 3 Sean Watherspoon Atmos collaboration. I know, insane, right? I did review this sneaker on my channel, so if you wanna learn more about it, check out that review. Again, I brought this sneaker because of Atmos, which is a Japan-based brand, and also because this sneaker 
is sort of an homage to Sean Wotherspoon and Atmos. This right sneaker being an homage to LA and this left sneaker being an homage to Japan. The urban aesthetic of it, the modernized grind of Japanese culture embodied in a sneaker and it's such a dope looking sneaker but 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 you guys know me i am comfort over everything i say it in almost every sneaker review and these guys again they just weren't it you'd think that the corduroy would be soft or like better than leather right i wore my nike sbs and they were infinite times more comfortable than an a6 gel i3 which is when you think of a6 and their premier silhouette this is it I do have a pair of Gelite Sagas that Lynette gave me a few years ago and I wear that sneaker all the time. I've never had problems with it. So I was expecting the same thing with these, especially being the Gelite 3s. You're expecting it not only to be stylish, but also comfortable. But it's the same pain that I feel with Air Jordan 1s, Nike SBs, and Nike Air Force 1s, where there's something here on the outer toe box that was just grinding into my foot. This is a 12.5, by the way, even sized up and it was still so painful. There was a point where we were on the bullet train. I was literally just trying to go to sleep trying to take a nap but i couldn't because these were digging into my feet and they were so painful that as rude as it was i'm sorry japan that i had to do it there was no one else in the car by the way besides my family i had to take off my shoe i had to give my dogs a break because they were just so painful i even took out the insoles just to make more room and it still didn't help that much again ultimately i decided during the train ride when i threw them off my foot i was like i can't keep these as much as i would love to keep these in my collection if i'm never gonna wear them if they're not gonna give me any benefit whatsoever i kind of just want to get rid of them make more room in my sneaker collection unload to reload maybe i'll sleep on it a little bit more but it's been a week already since i was in japan and i think i'm pretty much more comfortable with the fact that i can sell these for a different sneaker maybe a different gel light model you know so a moment of silence for the sean wotherspoon a6 gel light 3 collaboration with atmos you will be missed sort of maybe i don't know i still don't know how i feel and quick disclaimer before some of you a6 lovers go at me in the comments down below this was just my personal experience on the sneaker maybe i just got the wrong size or maybe it's just my foot itself so take this with a grain of salt it's just personal opinion that i had a bad experience with the sneaker so some of you guys might not have the same experience so leave it in the comments down below let me know what you guys think so those were the three sneakers that i brought to japan now maybe some of you guys are wondering what other sneakers was i deciding on the number one sneaker that i'm wearing now this week actually was the sneaker that i was flipping a coin on whether i'd bring this sneaker or the sean Wotherspoons is the beams nike collaboration on the presto react i've also reviewed this sneaker on the channel before definitely go check it out because this is definitely top five most comfortable sneakers and honestly just putting them on like this look watch look how easy it is to put them on i don't have to unlace them i don't have to do anything just like that they're on they're easy to wear they're so comfortable they're so pillowy soft quick disclaimer i don't know if pillowy soft is going to be the best thing because sometimes you need a little bit of pushback from a sneaker these do have some sort of support there's some arc support right here i think depending on the person for sure if you're not walking around or standing around for more than an hour or two i think you'll be fine you definitely want to test it out for yourself if they will be a sneaker that will last you during your trip the other sneaker that i really wanted to bring to japan was the nike acronym prestos you can see on screen it's such a dope looking sneaker i definitely thought that it would be a great sneaker to bring although they are very comfortable i wanted to bring them more because of the aesthetic of it the very urban ninja type of vibe the colors itself super cool for the spring and summer season so if i had more room i definitely would have squeezed it in i haven't worn them in a while so i think next week i'm definitely gonna rock them once again there was one sneaker that i did test a week in april before we went to japan and it was the atmos new balance pigeon collaboration on the x racer so this sneaker again it's an atmos collaboration so it's definitely japanese based it was also made for the urban trekking vibe which is perfect for going around japan especially for what we were doing but it just didn't pass the test for me because of the overall comfort i talked about it in my review here on the channel so go definitely check that out it wasn't uncomfortable but it just wasn't as comfortable. Although aesthetically, they would have been great. It's just that all the other sneakers that I just talked about definitely outperformed it comfort-wise. You guys can tell I am very Nike-based. I am a Nike fanboy, but 
if I were to bring one Adidas, it would have been the Bape neighborhood collaboration on the Adidas POD 3.1s. One of my favorite Adidas's, of course, in my collection. And with the boost, with the neoprene upper and the style of it, of course, black and white, you can never go wrong with that. Super easy to style. I would have loved to bring it. Again, I think it just came down to the fact that I couldn't bring more than three sneakers. Actually, three sneakers was pushing it. I was only there for a week. So maybe next time that's going to be definitely a sneaker that I will bring on my Japan trip because I'm definitely going back. You definitely have to go back. And the last sneaker that I was deciding on bringing to Japan, which I kind of regret not bringing. I feel like I've just worn them so much. It's blown up here on my channel. If you guys haven't seen the review on them, definitely go watch it, which is the Nike Vomero 5s in Vast Gray. I'm very happy that Nike is coming back with this sneaker this year. A lot of collaborations and different colorways coming out. Maybe re watch my review first if it's the type of sneaker that you like, but don't take my word for it. Definitely just walk into a Nike right now, any sneaker store, grab a pair in your size, try them on. Even just trying them on, I guarantee you, you will fall in love with them. Aesthetically, it's definitely a modernized dad shoe, but this was a sneaker that I definitely would have loved to bring walking around on par with all of the new new balances out there that are super comfortable, super stylish. But again, with all of these sneakers that I talked about, whether it has some sort of backstory with Japan or whether it would have been the best sneaker to bring on any trip overall, hopefully this video helped you out along with the other video that I had on the tips and tricks so that you guys don't make the same mistakes that I made. One more time, RIP to these guys. Okay, that was kind of mean. I'm sorry. And that is it for this video. What do y'all think? What's your go-to travel sneaker? Leave a comment down below. I love conversing with you guys there. Follow me on Instagram at Albi Peralta. I'm a bit more personal there. I post stories almost every day and I post there when I have a new YouTube video. So that's one way to get notified. Other than, of course, subscribing to the channel, guys. It really does help a lot. And check out the other videos on my channel. As the banner says, I have anything and everything in between on there. That is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye, guys. The night is a moon, the night is a moon, the night is a moon, the night is a moon.